Welcome home, Ratback Marcus here, and welcome to Anime Avenue, the channel where I collect absolutely everything anime, but Naruto and also Pokemon are my ninja way. But now with that out the way, I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day, and if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Ghost type camera flip! I can do this. Oh, it's just a Mimikyu. It's about to get a whole lot brighter at that because your boy is here. Today, we are going to be opening up this entire box right here. This came out for around the Halloween time and I did not pick it up. And I wanted to open it up here on the show for you guys because it is themed around my favorite Pokemon in the world, Ghost, Dark, and Psychic Pokemon. So we are going to be taking a look here and pulling out some of the figures to add to the collection. If you guys don't know, you may not be able to tell from behind me, but I have a whole Pokemon collection as well too and a whole shelf that's themed around mostly Gengar and the Gengar family tree, but ghost Pokemon in general. And these figures, I cannot wait to add to it. This box was made by the company Jazzware, which makes super collectible figures for not just Pokemon, but Sonic, just about every other franchise you can think of. And most of their figures are super collectible, especially some of the old ones. So being able to get this was super clutch. I found it on Amazon for $35 and it's still available currently. And once they sell out, I can assure you they are not gonna be that cheap. I would be surprised if they aren't double that price, but time Halloween time comes around again so I'm hyped that we got this let's go ahead and sit down and we're gonna open this up first off let's check out the packaging because it glows in the dark Oh, one more light. Let's do it. What would you do if there was just like all this trail around my mouth that was showing with the black light? <laughs> like either you're in the eating a lot of cereal in the morning or something else. <laughs> <laughs> all right, turn it off. So the packaging glows Whoa. in the dark. There we go. Let's get the light on there. Get it everywhere on the sides, and then we'll give you guys some close-up pan shots of it. Let's check it out in three, two, one. So you guys saw it glowing in the dark. I'm not gonna show you the back of it because I don't even want to see the back of it completely because it reveals all the characters. On the front though, it is beautiful. As a person who's a fan of ghost type, this is everything. And I'm also a fan of Scooby-Doo. So this is like a perfect little display piece. You got Ghastly, Zora, Mimikyu, and of course the king of all ghosts. You have Gengar as well too. So you have 16 different gifts inside. It has some Pokemon figures in there and also some display pieces as well. But all of the characters in here are exclusive to this box and have a special finish on them that you can't get in some of their more widely available releases. All right, Mitch, I've never asked you this before. You know my favorite Pokemon. My top three favorite Pokemon are either Ghost or Dark. My favorite is Gengar, second favorite's Mimikyu, and third favorite is Darkrai. So who is your favorite Ghost Pokemon? I gotta say, I think from Gen 3, Dusclops. Dusclops, okay, so Duskull and then Dusclops. And Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir, yes. So you like Dusclops more than Dusk Noir? And Dusk Noir is sick. Yeah, <laughs> they're all <laughs> sick though. Gen it's just that line, some... that line is just sick. Ah, yeah, Gen 3 has some amazing. I love Sableye in that line. Sableye that, sick, yeah. that era too. So let's pop it open. Let's see here. So you open up this door and boom, it Ooh. says Happy Halloween. It has it in French and also in Spanish. So of course it is not Halloween, but I am a firm believer that Halloween is a year round type of product. So <laughs> <laughs> look at Mitchell Miller put find out the Ditto. This is a Ditto Pikachu character right here too. And I guess that is kind of spooky. You know the, the soulless black eyes. Yeah. Which actually doesn't even happen in the video game. It just happens in that episode. Back in the old Indigo League. So you have this ga Ghastly here looks like he doesn't even know. He looks like he just became a Ghastly. He's like, what? I'm, I'm dead? <laughs> <laughs> Zora. Oh man, that is cool. You even have Dreepy here. You have Houndor as well too. So here's the little windows right here. You have all the Trick or Treat style candy on the front. So we just pop these windows open. I suppose that's how we get our pieces out. This is one big window Yeah, I was up looking here. at that. I was like, damn, that's a big, big man up here. I'm assuming that may be where Gengar is. We should start probably. This is the last one. So let's start here with number one and we'll work our way through it. Let's do it. It. All right, so let's do it here. Number one. Okay, and boom, hey, oh. there he is, the Ditto Pikachu. So I don't know <laughs> if they glow in the dark. I think they're supposed to have like a metallic finish to them, and I can kind of tell it oh, on yeah. this one. It's kind of got a little bit more of a glossy look. So this Ditto figure did come out previously. It didn't have that metallic finish to it, so it's a variant special to this box. And man, he is super cute. And the quality on the figures is not bad at all. They are by Jazzware, who's been doing this for a long time. So we have the Ditto Pikachu right here in. He made his first appearance early with the copycat trainer in that episode. So super nostalgic seeing, uh, you know, Pikachu Ditto there. 
Okay, so that was number one. I guess we should just keep it in order here. So number two is over here. It kind of goes around in its own little order. So number two. Oh, Ooh. now that one, you can see that metallic finish. It's got like a little blue to it, yeah. Oh, that is clean. That's cool that we get two kind of disguised Pokemon. This guy, Ditto, you know, he, he kind of did that before him, right? It's just this one's like, yeah. It's temporary. Like, it's temporary. But I mean, essentially, they do the same thing, except for Zora. Uh, does he take their moves too? No, huh? No, he just copies he, the look. Yeah, he just copies the look, whereas Ditto transforms quite literally everything. The moveset and also their look for the entire remainder of the battle. Zora, he starts out that way to kind of deceive you into thinking it's a different type than maybe what he is. But in reality, he's actually Zora. And man, and in Scarlet and Violet, this guy would bug me like crazy because he would always transform into other Pokemon and then you run into him and he turns into Zoroa, which is cool. You know, you want Zora like once. And then after that, <laughs> usually he always transforms into like a rare Pokemon, like one you're kind of looking for, like one that's not spawned very often, and then it transforms. But man, he is adorable here. We even got to see a Hisuian one later on too, so a very well-loved Pokemon. He even got his own movie. You got a movie, man. But you can see the metallic finish oh, yeah. way better on him. Got like this blue shine to it. That looks so clean. So there we go, Zora. <laughs> I told you before, not me. <laughs> Number three. Ooh, so this one's a display piece. Okay. Oh, that is so freaking sweet. That is gonna be adorable. So you know when you go to like, <laughs> all, even this is hard to get out. So you know when you go to like a pumpkin patch, they have like that little like fixture you can put your head through? Yeah, whether it's like a scarecrow or something. I think that's what this is gonna be. So it's a little cardboard cutout. So it's not like the craziest quality anything or anything, but you know, for the fun of it, you can always just add this to your collection. But I might even add this in the display just somewhere in a little like dead spot anyway. Anyway, so you have the little hole right there you can stand and put your face through. Can we go for far back enough with my face to where I could be inside the pumpkin? Yeah. This isn't weird at all. <laughs> so I think these Pokemon might be a little too short, but yeah. <laughs> they could. I mean, maybe Pikachu would be a little better or Ditto here. This might be like for like Gengar or something. Though. Yeah, somebody a little taller, but that is such a cool little piece to add in there. And I know it just kind of adds some fun to it. As you're going through the spooky time of year, you can kind of add in these little pieces. All right, so let's take a look here. Number four. Open your door. Ooh, Hound Door. Yes, Hound Door. The only viable fire type in Gen 2. <laughs> the metallic looks clean. Type crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, besides the one you have to pick. Yes, dude, the Houndor is so freaking cool with that metallic finish. I would wish we had the regular version of them to kind of compare it. I would imagine that he's a darker black, you know, probably. Yeah, it's like this like kind of gray. gray. Yeah, I think that one is super clean though, and Houndor will always be in my memory from the Pokemon 3000 where he just woke up and chose violence. <laughs> so sick. No? Hmm? All right, number five. Come on, I want to see a Gengar evolution of some kind. Ooh. Okay, let's another display piece here. What is that? I have no clue. Oh, it's a cauldron. A what? A cauldron. I guess that's a cauldron. You played, you played Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I never thought of it as a cauldron because the cauldrons in Minecraft just look like little bathtubs. Square things, yeah. <laughs> they look like little sinks. So it's a cauldron right here. Let's go ahead and put this here. That's cool. Yeah, it's like a cauldron to cook scythers <laughs> <laughs> or something green inside That's of ghost ectoplasm in there. <laughs> witch stuff, witch substance. And this one too, you could have like a little ghastly coming out of it or something. So they're just little display pieces to kind of build your own little uh, Halloween Pokemon nativity scene. All right, so that's sick. Number six here. Kind of a tall one. Another display piece. Uh, well, that explains They could have at least mixed them up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know what, get these out the way. <laughs> what is this one? I have no clue again. I still have not a clue. I don't even can't tell that we build it. This one's a spider web of some sort. Oh, it looks like maybe like uh, some legs or something or a table. Ah, yes. A table. I think you have to flip it around then so the spider web's on top. Then I'll get spider web on my food. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a flimsy table, but it is a table. It is a, a display piece, I suppose. You gotta really balance that. Can we even make that happen? Maybe you got a little joltic or something. Someone who's actually sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get that happen. I'm committed. It's so perfect. No, that table blows, man. You, I guess that's the spookiness of it. All your food falls. So the table's okay. It just looks cool by itself. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just, you can put the cauldron on there. That's just it. In this. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot put anything on this table. As you say. You definitely can't put your hopes on it. So there we go. We have three Pokemon. <laughs> three display pieces. Come on, a Pokemon. Seven. Hey! Oh, that is amazing! 
thing, the adorable. Where do you even get this little freaking like pumpkin hat? <laughs> it's like a little uh freaking Andre 3000 pumpkin hat. That is so adorable. I love him. I never really think about uh Bulbasaur being like a spooky Pokemon, but he's adorable, and you can kind of see him running around a pumpkin patch. So he has his little bulb back there. You can kind of see that metallic finish on his like sides there as the curvature happens. That one is probably of the ones we pulled out so far, I think he's my favorite. This one, and then the Ditto. Yeah, uh, the Ditto one's really cool too. I love the, the, like, the metallic finish in the Zora, but this one's too cute to handle. <laughs> Number eight. Eight. Let's do it. Oh, some more, <laughs> some more advent pieces. You want some more displays? <laughs> okay, so we have another display here, and this one's a Ooh. pile of candy. One pile of candy. Two pieces of candy. All right, so there we have the little pile of candy next to it. Can that fit on the table? Hey! <laughs> there we go. The only thing that could go on there is this pile of candy. That at least it looks okay, too. <laughs> yeah, say the pile of candy right there. Hound door might fit through the window. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So you can take a little photo right there with this These candy. These are a little too tall for people's stuff. <laughs> Zora was pretending to be candy currently. <laughs> this is tall grass. He's just hiding in it. <laughs> <laughs> at least the good thing is we have a starter. <laughs> All right, so boom. There we go. We have four Pokemon, four advent pieces here. Kind of keep them separated for right now. Ones that will definitely be going on display there. That was for sure Zora. This guy right here. I might have to find a place for you too. I don't know. I, they might all go. Okay, so Lion that was pump. eight, nine. Ooh. Dreepy. Where are the Gengar evolutions? I'm starting to think maybe they're here. That would be sick. Like all three of them? I gotta say, I do love Dragapult's design. Yeah, and I mean like... I can't, I can't, I can't even express it, but as like a ghost type collector, like collecting this particular type, you just don't get little figures like this. Unless like usually him, you'd have to like buy like a bigger box with like the whole evolution line or something to get it. So it's cool to just get these little tiny little smaller characters and they have a special coating on them too to kind of reflect well with lights. Like especially if you have like a purple lighting effect going on there, you're going to see that kind of reflecting off of them. So we have Dreepy, who right now is his own Pokemon. But at some point when he becomes a Dragapult, he will just be a launch. He will just be a, a projectile yeah <laughs> so there he is right there i imagine how dreepies are born is when a dragapult shoots one of his dreepies a little too far and he's just on his own yeah i mean there's probably eggs too but i like that idea better the jazzwares makes the other like that full size dragapult though right yeah they're the ones that make all of the pokemon select figures as well too yeah. so we have the pokemon select uh dragapult and it's huge comparatively to this little guy that's just like the little tiny detail on the bottom <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna give them all their own little photo moment here in the uh, pumpkin <laughs> You gotta have him hanging out with the candy too. You can even have him kind of come. No, nope, no, nope. I called it too big for anybody right now. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so still my favorite is the Bulbasaur right now, but that one's up there. <laughs> Number 10. We only have six left, man. Only six left. Oh, oh that. That one's sick. You said your favorite was Dusk Off. There's a little unborn child right there. Or is pre evolution right there? Dude, that might be my favorite one currently. I just oh. love the eye. Yeah, that one is amazing. I know Mitchell loves Duskull. I got him a Duskull plushie. That one is just like the the, the Duskull character is just an underrated, like aesthetically sick character. Like the skull and the bones. Yeah, I like. I might have to get myself that plushie very very soon here because after seeing Duskull, I'm starting to become a little fan of Duskull here even more so. The metallic finish on his mask is so clean. So there we have Duskull right there with his little Reaper's cloth over his back. Oh, let's give him his little photo moment here. Oh, he fits in there the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's taking the cake is my favorite one right now. I think that's what makes me like like him is he's just so like Reaper themed. Yeah, and he's like he's spooky. He's just genuinely kind of spooky. You know, the way he kind of floats up and down. And the way his eye goes like side to side. A singular yeah. eye, yeah. I'm going to say favorite, second favorite, third favorite, fourth favorite, fifth and sixth favorite. <laughs> the Scar! 11, man, we're already on 11. This is going by so quick. It's like if Bonnie from Five Nights at Freddy had his own candy. Let's <laughs> What do we got here? Ooh. Oh! Oh, hell, the, the second king. We have Mimikyu, the best thing to come from Alola. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be hard to get out of here. Oh, 
man. That, that looks so good. Is beautiful, man. That might be the best, like, painted and everything. You can see <laughs> so much of the metallic on him. That is, took the cake as my absolute favorite. He is adorable, but yet slightly terrifying. The perfect way to make a Pokemon, in my opinion. All right, so we'll put him right next to Duskull. I'm sorry, Duskull. You were really cool until he came out. <laughs> now he's got to get his moment. <laughs> his little Kodak moment. There you go, little Kodak. We'll put you next to the other fake Pikachu. Two fake Pikachus. We need it now. We need a real Pikachu. We have two fake Pikachus. We have a real Pikachu, a number twelve. No, no. We have Pumpkin Matter. Look at you, you little cute undead god of death. There we go. We'll put him next to that, the little pumpkin piece. So you can kind of see, you can kind of build your own little scene there. Yeah, there you go. You have your own little setup right there. That is such a cool box set. I love like all the different variations of character. Like this was literally made for me. Like I said. And if you guys want to see us open up more of these activity scenes, let me know because they have some other ones from different, you know, different years that they've released. They're a little bit more pricey, but I would definitely be up to open up some of them. They have some Funko ones too, which we might open up down the line, but I really love the Jazzer ones because they look so much like the characters actually comparatively to just like a Funko Pop. All right, 13, That's there he is, the oh real Pikachu. Oh my gosh, that was the last little door. <laughs> oh no, it's sad to be over, but that means they have to be in there. I mean, that's sick that they have all three up there. Yeah, I'm pumped to see them because they're probably going to be pretty sizable then. So there it is. We have the adorable, put him next to Bulbasaur, the adorable as ever Pikachu with the little pumpkin outfit. I love that. That is amazing. <laughs> you cannot, I'm gonna say that beats Bulbasaur for me. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> top three are all going in this little spot right here. That's the top three going for me. That is so freaking for now. amazing. <laughs> all right, let's give him his Kodak moment. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can deny it no longer. You're excited for this. I am pumped. The last door. Ooh, they are Whoa. big. They are big character pieces. Oh man, I gotta get them out of here carefully. Oh my gosh, the base for Hunter is so sick, dude. The base for Hunter is amazing. The wow. hands are actually like articulated. That's sick. Jazzware, you freaking killed it. I would have never expected them to do that. Like typically what they do with Hunter is it kind of just melds onto his body, you know? But he has actual, just like the real Hunter, his hands can move separately, almost like their own little being from the body. And you can pose him however you want to. You can kind of have them both kind of in here, like with his hands out, like more classically, like a little trick or treat or I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, that's still like one of the absolute top tier ones. He's that so goes cool. without saying. Yeah. Without saying, that is. Look at him just holding on to freaking Mimikyu's back. You can't even finish Kodak moment. <laughs> <laughs> that is a monster. That really made it worth it. Like, if there was like a whole box of just these little ones, I would have been happy still. But then you get these premium, like, full size character form factors. And these metallic. And metallic. Exactly. That, that did it for me. It's okay. The undead life gets easier, but then also harder. And then it just goes on. On and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next up here. Oh, there's a ghastly. Right? Yes, there's a ghastly. He is also going to be tough to get out. Oh my goodness. On the actual, like, ghostly trail behind him, the Whoa. metallic looks incredible. Oh man. And just like with Hunter. I don't know if I like that one more or not. Look, dude, you can actually move the Ghastly's head. Oh, that's sick. Separately from the actual, like, ectoplasm behind that it. That might be my favorite right now. Yeah, that one is pretty freaking sweet. I think I might have the regular version of this so we can compare it. Wow, so there's a little dusty, but there's the common version of oh, it. Oh, yeah, you can tell, like, night and day. It's just got a little bit more of a spooky look to it. It looks more, like, blue, like there's something, like, aura kind of going around it yeah yeah i think i prefer this one yeah. it just adds that dynamic of like just spookiness to it this one looks a little bit more transparent but man that is a really mean freaking ghastly also i mean the variant the shiny version of him is blue too so that almost has like you know he has a little shiny dna in yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you think hunter or ghastly is the best one so far i love that his hands move but this right now for me yeah yeah I, I i gotta agree i think the ghastly is the cooler of the two but this is definitely sweet too all right now for the main man himself the king of the ghosts 
We have the Gengar. There we have him, Gengar. Oh, a jumbo sized Gengar figure, and I forget how he works. I think maybe his arms? So you push him down, and boom, his oh. tongue comes shooting outward. Even that's metallic. I know, <laughs> it's so dope. <laughs> that is amazing. So there is the whole line there. And I have the Ghastly and the Gengar, but I did not have the Haunter. So these will be my preferred display set. And you can see definitely huge difference. It almost Gengar. looks shiny on the Gengar because Gengar shiny is only a slight different, darker version of him. So you have the Gengar and also the other, the common Gengar here. And you can really see, especially on the back here at an angle, yeah, that like metallic finish. This is way like more pinky purple than that. That one's just freaking yeah and it almost looks higher dark. quality just because of that metallic <laughs> yeah finish. like this looks more like a toy and this one looks like you know a little bit more like a display piece even though they're like the exact same toy technically yeah see those tongue differences yeah <laughs> i That's... think he has to have this one <laughs> <laughs> That's something gengar would probably do <laughs> That is amazing. So there we have it. Let's put it in the correct order here. We have the Ghastly, we have the Haunter, and then we also have the Gengar here. That is incredible. And then the Mimikyu too. Is that like my whole favorite family right here of Pokemon? That is, I gotta get that whole box at 10. I mean, because if you were to buy just the Gengar figure, if you were to buy him at the store in the original box that it comes in, it's $11. Wow. It's $11 to $12 for the Jazzware individual Gengar piece. And you know these probably sold similar. Yeah, the the Gengar Ghastly one you can buy separately too, and he costs about nine dollars, ten dollars. So that's right there, already twenty dollars. The whole box is thirty-five, and you get all of these mini characters. Basically, you're paying for these three because this is pretty much thirty for the three. Yeah. Yeah, you get these three, and then all of these guys for almost free. That's, that's a great. And you get you know little freaking broken table and you know, <laughs> nativity C. These are like kind of like you know fillers, but nonetheless, that's an incredible set there. Especially if you like the spookier style Pokemon like I do. Amazing. So if you guys enjoyed this video smack the like button subscribe if you're new here so you guys do not miss any of the videos we got coming up here we're definitely gonna be doing some more pokemon style videos it's one of my favorite franchises in the entire world my whole life so i, I can deny it no longer i want to make pokemon videos <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna be making some more of them if you guys want to see that let me know what you guys want to see next on that note stay tuned here we're gonna add some of these guys to the ghost type shelf and to the collection before that you know the drill scan it Okay, so we did add them onto the shelf here. You can see we have the Haunter there. It looks sweet right next to Dreepy. We have the old school Burger King uh, Gengar. <laughs> but then next to him, we have the metallic Gengar. So I took a regular Gengar down because I kind of just prefer the metallic one to it. And we already have him sealed here too. So I think, you know, he's kind of covered in that particular figure format. And we added the, oh man, that metallic one looks so mean. The metallic form of Ghastly next to the Zora. And then on top of our Phantom Four, Horses. We also have the metallic Mimikyu and also Dusk Lops. Just a mean setup now. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I mean, there's so much space still to fill in here, but my favorite shelf, and I just always have so much fun adding to it every single time. So that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you smack the like button, subscribe if you're new here. Also, don't forget if you guys haven't seen it already, we just did a full booster box opening up Pokemon cards. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're gonna love the cards as well. And if you guys wanna support the show further, Go check out the Patreon where you can sign up for only $2 a month. And when you sign up, you get extended versions of every video that I upload, whether it's here or Comfort Cartoons as well, my other channel. And they're also 100% ad free and you even get early releases on some of the different tiers. It's the ultimate way to watch Anime Avenue and Comfort Cartoons. And if you wanna see us live, go check out the Whatnot streams we have every single Friday. And a lot of times we do have some Pokemon stuff over there too on our Friday streams. And we have giveaways as well. Plus there's a bunch of people over on whatnot that are selling Pokemon cards, figures, you name it, including anime stuff as well too. It's an amazing platform to pick up any of the stuff that you like. It's basically eBay with a live stream aspect to it. And they have shops that are open 24 hours a day. And you get 15 bucks for free when you sign up that you can use towards anything on the store if you use my link down below. And I'll see you guys in this video right here that I know you're gonna love. And as always, Rep Pack, I'll see you beautiful people in the next video. Adios and bloop.